Karen. More specifically, Karen the Stormtrooper. By now, most of you should be familiar with her. If not, be sure to check the link in the bio. But what exactly is a Karen though? A Karen is a woman who acts entitled, expects certain privileges or special treatments, and gets angered very easily. The term is often used to criticize the behavior of a self-absorbed middle-aged woman who demands to be treated special and believes the world owes them everything they deserve. They can often be found in the wine aisle of your local grocery store. Store. A Karen is also not afraid to whip out their most powerful weapon, and that is the camera app that comes with every cellular device. While often screaming, you're being recorded at the top of their lungs. Nobody likes them. Even Karens don't get along with other Karens. Kind of uh, ironic, wouldn't you say? Today we're going to focus on some of the aspects of Karen the Stormtrooper you may or may not have noticed. First of all is the stages of Karen. As of right now, there have been a total of three Karen episodes. So far. We can see as the episodes have progressed, Karen's appearance has changed. Here is what she looked like at the beginning. In episode 2, we can see that she is wearing a neck brace courtesy of Vader's lightsaber. Then in episode 3, she is heavily bandaged up courtesy of Vader's lightsaber once again along with the Emperor's Force Lightning, which reveals to us one of the worst characteristics of a Karen, her determination. Any normal human being would learn that after the first lightsaber swing, you should just cut your losses and move on. But not a Karen. Karen. Even a child knows from touching fire for the first time not to touch fire again. There are many other ways to identify a Karen. One other way would be to see if a Karen claims to live her life by a moral code. And no, I don't mean a religious or spiritual code. It's usually by a dopey saying or a handmade decor spread around their environment. We can see this in episode 2 as Karen's cell phone wallpaper. Live, laugh, love or otherwise known as the three L's, which honestly is three aspects I have never seen a Karen exhibit. Another common move of the Karen is the bluff, or even just blind threats. We all know that Karens have a very high ego, which also means they think very much of themselves as very powerful, which in reality, we all know they don't. Of course, we both know you don't. We can see this in episode three when Karen is noticed as faking most of her injuries. Excuse me, did you just talk back to a customer? Karens can also be known to be very desperate when things are not going their way, which often means things get a little louder and a little more dramatic. Fake crying could be a part of this, or another way to describe it would be the behavior of a 14-year-old girl. Nope. Uh, just do it, okay? Not my problem. But you have to. Which is probably the highest intelligence of a Karen anyway. We've gone over many aspects of what a Karen actually is, but be sure to let me know in the comments of what other characteristics that you have personally seen of a Karen, or even your own personal experience of an encounter with the Karen. Let's move on to some of the hidden secrets though, which I'll be honest, you guys have gotten pretty amazing at finding these. I think I might need to start hiding these even a little bit harder. We all know that Vader is shown as the manager, and granted this one is a little bit more obvious, but we can see that Boba Fett is shown as the assistant manager from the pin on his chest. His appearance isn't noticed until the very end of the episode, but this is actually hinted at the very beginning, where we can see that Larry is working on a rifle at the table. This is actually Boba Fett's blaster, or otherwise known as the EE-3 carbon rifle. Another noticeable change that was shown for a brief moment in episode 3, and that is the sign above the guns. In episode 1, we can see that it says Larry shop, but in episode 3, some time has passed, and based on past experience, with Karen, the sign has now been changed to say no shoes, no shirt, no Karens. This is actually only shown in one shot because the rest of the shots that show Karen are zoomed in a little closer to her. So if you did notice this one, there was only one opportunity to catch it. So congrats for having a very keen eye on this episode. A few other things that have been changed since episode one are some of the weaponry in the background. Some are more obvious than others. For example, many of you did notice the ghost in the bottom left corner, which is from Destiny. And there's actually a second item from Destiny and it's in the upper left hand corner, which is a pistol from Destiny as well. We can also notice the blaster that's right in the middle. While this is actually a Star Wars rifle, it does not match the timeline of this video. This blaster was mostly used by clone troopers during the Clone Wars, so this would actually be more of a vintage weapon or item in Larry's shop compared to a modern one. Now as we turn over to Larry's side of the counter, we can very clearly see an MA5 series Halo rifle. This was actually also noticed in Episode 1 
so not too much of a surprise to see it again in episode 3. But what actually was a bigger surprise is that we can actually see two ends of a lightsaber in the bottom left corner. I did actually see quite a few comments of you guys finding these, but there was some debate as far as whose lightsabers these actually belong to. Well, if you ever played Fallen Order, we can see that this is actually Cal Kestis' lightsaber. And then the other one, more commonly known, is actually Darth Maul's double-wielded lightsaber. So for all of you who have enjoyed the Karen series so far, I want to thank you for your support over this series. Also, if you enjoyed this breakdown video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up as well. And again, also be sure to let me know in the comments of your own personal Karen experiences. Thanks again, troopers, and I will see you next time.